Hello and welcome to Homeschool Trivia. I hope you had good holidays over the past week and you remembered to come. So everybody's kind of out of sorts this week with our schedule. Um, tell us in the comments where you're watching from or something fun you've done over the last week. And while you're doing that, I'm going to have Katie from the Wolf Pack go ahead and share what special day today is, which seems a little odd, and maybe a few others. All right. So today, December 28th, is Pledge of Allegiance Day. It's also card playing day. So that sounds extra fun. I think that today sounds like a lovely day to sit home and play cards. I don't know where you guys are, but we have snow. We actually had a white Christmas, which was fun, um, but we still have snow, so it's still going. And tomorrow is TikTok Day and National Pepper Pot Day. And I knew what that was at one point, but I don't remember. Do you? Pepper Pot? Pepper Pot. No, no, no I don't know what that is. I want to know, is it TikTok T-I-K or T-I-C-K? T-I-C-K. I think it's like TikTok, time's coming down. We're running out of days of the year. Wow. I think that's what it is. Um, and yeah, pepper pot. I know I looked at that one time, but I don't remember what it is. But the 30th is bacon day. Look, you like your bacon. Very nice. I'm looking up pepper pot. Oh, it's like a recipe. It's a a it's South American derived dish popular in Guyana. Huh. Is that wow. what it is? <laughs> I don't know, but it has its own day. <laughs> Pepper pot. I don't know. Okay. I don't know why it has. Well, it's popular around Christmas in Guyana. So oh, that, kind maybe of, that's it. that kind of matches up. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get our slides up here. And are we ready to start answering some questions? All right, here we go. We are talking about New Year's for the whole class today. So I'm going to do five questions that are more about New Year's Eve. And then I think Katie is doing five about New Year's Day. And then our current event is even about New Year's. So here we go. Your first question is, which of the following countries is the first to celebrate the new year, okay? So, because of the way the earth moves, not everybody starts a new day at the same time, right? So not everybody starts a new year at the same time. So which country is the first of these four to celebrate? Is it China, Australia, South Africa, or the United States. So which of these four countries will celebrate the new year at midnight first? Ashley has her scoreboard ready. She does. And while you're all thinking, I just wanna give you an idea. If you ever get bored while you're waiting for other people to answer, feel free to just start making a picture on paper and maybe you draw the fireworks you see here or maybe you draw something else that has to do with what our questions are about and that way you won't get too bored while you wait for everybody to answer all right so we have a split house at ashley's house we have one child that says china and one that says south africa I'm going to see if our other family who's watching wants to chime in. All right. The answer is Australia. We did not have a winner here. I didn't ask you, Katie. Did you know that? No. <laughs> I think I did something wrong. I was, I thought it was going to be South Africa. Oh, okay. tell us about no. that, Randy. It's Australia. Let's see if I have my globe. So there is an imaginary line in the Pacific Ocean. It goes from the North Pole to the South Pole 
called the International Dateline. This is where the new year or the new day starts each day. And then as you turn the globe, turn the earth, each section gets to start their new day. So it's really Russia, I believe, that is the very first country to celebrate the new year. But Australia is very close. New Zealand actually would be a little before Australia. Okay, so it goes this way. Were you thinking it went from bottom up? Okay. No, Look at no that. I, I had it wrong. I just had Katie my learned something wrong. new. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. So in Colombia, which is in South America, some people carry an empty suitcase around on New Year's Eve. Why? Is it because people give away clothes they don't want on New Year's Eve? Is it because people hand out food and they want a place to put it? Is it to inspire lots of travel in the new year? Or is it to keep people from visiting them in the new year? Why do some people carry around an empty suitcase on New Year's Eve in Colombia? What are you thinking, Katie? This is new to me too. Um, I I believe it's going to be A or C. Okay. Let's see what Ash. Let's see. We've got from Ashley. We've got a D to keep people from visiting. Well, let's see what her nine-year-old says. And B. To hand people hand out food. So I think, and we've got a guess for A from Aaron's family. All right. So did what did you say, Katie? A and C? I said A or C. Is it did you want to narrow it down? <laughs> no, because no. I don't know. <laughs> okay, it okay. is C. It is just to inspire lots of travel in the new year. So it's kind of like a little good luck thing towards travel. Yeah. All right. All right. Now in Spain, people have a tradition of eating 12 of something at midnight on New Year's Eve. What do they eat 12 of? Do they eat 12 pomegranates, 12 olives, 12 grapes, or 12 hot peppers? What do you think? Do you know this one, Katie? Well, I know in some places it's C, but I'm not sure if it's in Spain or not. So I, I don't know if maybe Spain does B instead of C. Oh. That would make sense too. But because you lived, C. where did you live? I lived in South America. In I lived in Bolivia. Okay. Um, not of this, okay. but. All right. So we have guesses for olives, grapes, and hot peppers. All right. Oops. And we've got some else joining us. And pomegranates. We have all four covered now. So if you said grapes, you are correct. Thank goodness it's not hot peppers. Okay. That, that would be a tough one. So you could do this at your house at midnight if you have grapes. You could eat 12 of them for good luck. Ooh, there's a bug flying in front of me. Excuse me. All right. So in Japan, on New Year's Eve, people eat soba noodles. Why? Is it so they have a long life? No one knows why. They just do it. So they have lots of energy for dancing or is it to scare off evil spirits? Why do people in Japan eat soba noodles on New Year's Eve? And I'll show you a picture of soba noodles on the next slide in case you're wondering right now what they look like. Do you have a guess, Katie? <clears throat> I am going to say 
A. Okay. So we have an A from Katie. We have, oop, this all moved on me really fast here. We have a D and an A and a D and an A in our chat here. All right. So is it to have a long life or scare off evil spirits? It is so they have a long life. So Benoodles are very long. So that's the idea that's is they represent with. a long life. And so that's a picture of Soba Noodles there. All right. Last one of this section. What season is it in Australia at New Year's? Okay. Because what the weather's like outside might, you know, influence how you celebrate something. So is it spring, summer? Fall or winter in Australia at New Year's? People are thinking. All right, we have an answer for summer and an answer for spring. Waiting for two more answers here. Maybe. What is your answer, Katie? Summer. Okay, Katie says summer, and then we have another answer for winter. And another, so we have a couple summers actually in the chat thread. All right. If you said summer, you're correct. So you see a map of the world there. And you see the equator is the line in the middle. And anywhere below the equator is going to have the opposite weather of the people above the equator. So while here in the northern hemisphere, it's winter. In the southern hemisphere, it is summer. So in Australia, it's going to be like, beach weather for New Year's. And in South Africa, um, they do lots of outdoor festivals for New Year's because it is warm. All right, I am going to hand it off to Katie. Let me add you up here. And I'll be back in a few minutes to do our current event. But you're not leaving us, are you? I'm not leaving. I'm just gonna be a little quieter. Okay, so we're actually doing New Year's traditions in America, and some of them will be New Year's Eve and some of them will be New Year's Day. So, but it's everything that, or not everything that we do here, but everything we're going to talk about is something that we, some people here in the United States will do. So there is a song that is often sung on New Year's Eve, and it's Auld Lang Syne, and it's actually Scottish. But what it's what does it mean in Scottish? That's the title of the song. And what does it mean in Scottish? Good riddance, never again, old long ago, or better luck next time. What does that mean? It's often sung on New Year's Eve here in this country, even though it has a Scottish background. So what does that title mean? Good riddance, which is like bye-bye, or never again, old long ago, or better luck next time. What do you think? Old long ago is a guess. What else do we have? Do you know, Randy? Um, I don't know for sure, but I have a good, okay. I have an okay. educated guess, not just a random okay. guess. Better luck next time from Ashley's five-year-old. Never again. Do we have one more person? And the C. You got a okay. guess for C. And that is my All guess right. as well as C. Yes. So it's old long ago is what that title means. And it, this is really interesting. It was actually an old Scottish poem that was turned into a song. But it was performed, the reason we sing it here in this country is because it was performed on live TV for the very first time when they, um, in 1943, when they did a big New Year's Eve show, they had Guy Lombardo and his band sing. 
and they he chose this song because he's actually from Canada. And in Canada, where he lived, there was a big Scottish population. And so that was a song that he was used to singing for many years. So then he sang it live in our country on TV. And then it became a thing that a lot of us do here in this country. So there's lots of international uh, history to that. But that is what it means. So it's often sung on New Year's Eve. And that's actually... Um, obviously a picture of him singing. Then he became like a, a thing to do every New Year's Eve. He would perform. All right. So what is dropped in New York City's Times Square on New Year's Eve? There's something that drops. Is it a giant bucket of popcorn? Is it 8,753 gallons of soda? Is it tubs of candy? Or is it an... I, the, thing is covering my slide. 11,875 pound ball. Thank you. So what is dropped on New Year's Eve in um, New York time, New York City's Times Square? Popcorn, soda, candy, or a big ball? Popcorn. That'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Just like catch popcorn in your mouth. They should do popcorn and soda. That'd be fun. All right. So we have ball. And I think we have some popcorns. I always lose track of when people start. Answering. You've got two for ball, two for popcorn, and one for soda that just came in. Okay. All right. So the answer is the ball. And the ball started in 1907. The picture on the left is actually a person standing over the ball taking a picture. Um, so like it slides down this pole. And then the picture on the right is actually um, a picture from far away as the ball is coming down the pole. You can see it at the top of the screen coming down the pole. So it started in 1907. It used when Somebody started it because he built a new skyscraper in um, New York and he wanted to like advertise it. So he had a fireworks show on New Year's Eve and that went on for, I think, I don't know, maybe five or six years. I can't remember the exact number. And then they decided that wasn't exactly safe was to have fireworks on top of this, you know, big skyscraper. So he changed it to this ball and it has been going on since 1907 and 1 million people attend in person. They all gather in Times Square to watch it. And it's this huge festivity. Um, and then billions of people watch it worldwide on TV. So it's a very big um, tradition that a lot of people uh, participate in. And then there's actually a lot of different countries now that have adapted or adopted it and then actually adapted it to maybe something different or it could actually be a ball. So there's a lot of different performance performances. Um, example, not examples, what's the word I want? Like there's a lot of, uh, help me think of a word, Randy. I'm not sure what you're trying to say. I know. There's a lot of, not perform, like a lot of situations where this happens for New Year's Eve in different places. I still can't think of the word I want. All right. A New Year's resolution is a decision to what? To start a good habit, stop a bad habit, make a positive change, or all of the above. So a lot of people like to make New Year's resolutions uh, to start the new year. So is it, are they deciding to start a good habit, stop a bad habit, make a positive change, or all of the above? What do you think? Got some B's and an A. All right. So it's really all of the above. And actually, it's really what you want it to be. But um, traditionally, it can be any of those things. So people all across the country will choose to start the new year with a plan to stop a bad habit, make a positive change, or simply to do something different with their lives. So it can be really whatever you want it to be. But those are like the three main things that people focus on. So I don't know if you have thought about any New Year's resolutions. And if you did my uh, 
page on this in, in the pack that we put out, it talks about how most people fail at their New Year's resolutions every year. Every year they come up with something and then they fail at it, but people keep trying. All right. What type of peas do many people eat on New Year's Day? Is it white-eyed, black-eyed, yellow-bellied, or green-eared? What kind of peas do a lot of people eat on New Year's Day? White-eyed, black-eyed, yellow-bellied, or green-eared? So we have a black eyed and a green eared. And I did put a link to our New Year's resources, which are free. If you have not grabbed them, go ahead and grab them today. And you will have some fun activities to do over the long weekend. Definitely. All right. We've got some black eyes, lots of black eyes, some black eyed peas. And some yellow, I've got a yellow bellied. I don't know if we have any wide eyed. All right, the so. answer, no, the answer is black eyed. And that's a picture of them being, the, um, like they've been prepared. Let me go back, sorry. So if you can see in this picture, I can't point to it, but you can see like there's a little, like kind of almost right in the middle, there's a P or it might be a bean, you might call it a bean, that's like kind of creamy color with a black spot on it. Those are black eyed peas. And then they fix them. A lot of times they'll fix them with like ham um, and rice and onions and pork or pork ham. So it's common in the, in the Southern states. And actually my mom, who's from Nashville, Tennessee, used to make these on New Year's Day. I never wanted to eat them personally, but she used to make them on New Year's Day. Um, sometimes they're called Hop and John. And the thought behind it is that it's like an inexpensive, simple meal. And so if you start your new year eating that way, it might bring you great riches during the rest of the year so that you're starting off in the simple, inexpensive way of eating. You might, you know, get some great riches throughout the rest of the year. So that's the philosophy behind it or the thought behind it. And it's, something that happens a lot in the Southern states. Have you ever had this particular dish, Randy? I have not, no. Yeah. All right, last question. At the famous New Year's Day parade in California, every float must be covered in mm. what? Money, glitter, flowers or ping pong balls. So every float has to be covered in something. Money, glitter, flowers, or ping pong balls. What do you think it is? And I'm, I'm purposely not saying the name of the parade. So if you know the name of the parade, that gives you a really big hint. <clears throat> what do you think it is? Flowers. And money. Glitter. <laughs> and glitter. All right. I assume you know this one, Randy. Um, yes, I'm going to go with flowers. All right. And Ashley says flowers. Okay. So, yes. It's flowers and it's called the Rose Parade in case you haven't heard of it. It's a very famous parade that happens every New Year's. I actually went to it one year and it was very fun. Um, but every inch of every float has to be covered in flowers or other natural materials. So it could be leaves or seeds, things like that. But every inch is supposed to be covered in these items. And they're very strict about it. It's a, um, it's been going on, I don't remember how many years, but a very long time. So they have very strong traditions. Um, and it's an enormous parade. And it requires thousands of hours. And about, is it, that thing's covering my numbers, is it 18 million or 16 million? 18 million. 
eight, 10 million flowers are used every for every parade every year. So it is, it's quite a, something that they put together. And one year I went up, um, bef- they're allowed, you, you can go up and like tour the, the floats bef- after the parade. I think maybe like the next day <laughs> you can go tour them and you can see them. And it's quite a thing to just, the amount of work and workers that go into these are, it's enormous. Um, and then one, one year I actually went to the parade in the morning. You have to get there like at three in the morning. It's crazy. It was actually very cold, which is interesting, but yeah, it's quite a thing. And you can watch it on TV. It's so interesting to see on TV and that the floats are really extravagant. Like you can see like that Disney float, that third slide, like they're super extravagant. They'll move. They have all these, you know, these amazing themes and stuff that they put behind them and they all have to be covered in some kind of flower or natural material. So it is quite the undertaking. So there I, you have it. I did not know that, that that was where the rose came from. I assumed mm-hmm. it was, I don't know, something related to something else. Comments. All right. So it is time for our current event. And the current event is that the polar bear plunge is a New Year's tradition around the world. So you will hear about the polar bear plunge, I'm sure, this weekend if you look at the news. But here's my first question to you. What is the polar bear plunge? (laughs) Is it when polar bears in zoos get their annual bath? That means they just get one bath a year and that's when they have it is New Year's. Is it a special ice cream treat that's only given out around New Year's? Is it that people go swimming in very cold water? Or is it a game where you go around and tip over snowmen? So what do you think? (laughs) What do you think the polar bear plunge is? I hope it's not D. Those you kids making building D? those snowmen and people go around tipping them over. All right, let's see. We've got two votes for C, but a possible A. Ashley's Our nine-year-old D. thinks that's what you do. You tip over snowmen. I'm gonna put a ring camera on my snowman. <laughs> Watch him. <laughs> been a long time since we have built a snowman here in North Carolina. So we have another vote for swimming in very cold water. All right, let's see. The answer is C, that people go swimming in very cold water. Both Ashley's girls thought it was snowman tipping. Yes, that one actually came from my husband. I was like, I need another like wrong answer to this question. (laughs) I thought maybe your son came up with it. All right. So here's a question to you. If you go swimming in very cold water, what will happen to your heart rate or the speed of your heartbeat? Do you think it gets faster in the cold water or does it slow down in the cold water or does it not change at all? Maybe the cold water does not affect your heart rate. What do you think? If a slow down, do you know this, Katie? I believe so. You believe you know it. Okay. We have a gas for gets faster. And one for does not change. So we got all our bases covered. Let's see if Ashley's five-year-old or Dell has an answer or Alex. Any more answers? All right, we're gonna give it away. It gets faster. Oh, one of Ashley's girls left. So your heart rate gets faster when you jump in the water. So if you're someone who has some type of heart condition, a polar bear plunge is probably not the best bet for you, but you can always ask your doctor and see. There's something to be aware of that it could be dangerous. All right, so Coney Island 
is an area of New York. Okay, I'm going to show you where so you can get a, a visual. So here's our equator. So it's up around here. Sorry, I'm not holding that very close. And they have a big polar bear plunge there. It's like 1,500 to 2,000 people each year will jump in the water there. So what do you think the usual water temperature is for their polar bear plunge? Do you think it's about 25 degrees Fahrenheit? 35 degrees Fahrenheit? Somewhere between 58, 61 degrees Fahrenheit? or between 83 and 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So how warm or cold do you think the water usually is for this particular polar bear plunge? And what do you think, Katie? I think B. You think B, all right. Dell thinks C. All right, and Aaron, I'm gonna assume those are two kids that think A and B. Alex thinks C. All right, have we heard? I think Ashley guessed A. All right, so now all these temperatures are below your body temperatures. So they're all gonna feel cold, right? The answer is about 35 degrees. So that last one, the 83 to 86 degrees, that is normal like swimming lesson water. That's if a pool has swimming lessons, that's basically the temperature they're supposed to be keeping the water for swimming lessons. So if you've gone for a swimming lesson and you thought the water was cold, just imagine it 50 degrees colder. I don't think any of us can really imagine that unless we've done it. So it's very cold, just a few degrees above freezing. All right, so it's called the polar bear plunge. We know polar bears swim in cold water and they're mammals like us, meaning their blood is warm. Okay, so it's not like they're fish that don't really need to worry about the temperature so much. So how is it the polar bears can pull off swimming in cold water, but for us, it's so shocking. Is it because they have a thick layer of fat called blubber? They have two layers of fur. They have small ears and a small tail, or all of the above. So how is it the polar bears can swim in cold water naturally while it's so shocking? to us humans. All right, we have a guess for all of the above. Do you have a fact pack about polar bears at all, Katie? I don't. No. It's on my list though. I do have uh -huh. a unit study on polar bears. Oh, okay. So I do, I do have one informational sheet on polar bears, but all right. All right. We've got a choice for C, small ear, small tail. We have one for B. They have two layers of fur. Anybody else? We have another all of the above. What would you like to guess, Katie? I'm not sure. The all of the above is throwing me off because I don't think it's C, but maybe it is because mm, I know part. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. And another A. It oh. is all of the above. So they have thick layer blubber. So blubber is different than the fat most of us have, or I should say all us humans have, it has a lot more blood vessels in it. So it's just a whole different type of insulation than we have. They have two layers of fur. And then the small ears and small tail is just like you're not losing your body heat out big, you know, long extremities. So that the, yeah, the ears made sense to me. The tail didn't. So, okay. All right. So, I'm sure that's not like the biggest reason they're able to do it. No, I, it, it does make sense. All right. The last question. 
Okay. When do people in New Zealand do their polar bear plunges? This might relate back to another question earlier today. Is it New Year's, New Year's Day like everyone else? Do they do it on New Year's Eve instead? Do they do it in June near, oops, I have two those in there, near the solstice? Or is it just never cold enough in New Zealand to do a polar bear plant plunge? What do you think? What do you think, Katie? We have an gonna... answer for New Year's Eve. What do you want to say? I mean, if I had to guess, I'm going to say C. Okay, we've got a couple votes for C in the thread too so okay. maybe that's right got lots of questions i have did a give you a hint <laughs> say that again i have a question mark behind my c also okay you have a question mark too so i gave you the hint that it related to an earlier question okay and it is in june because let's remember on new year's what's it like in the southern hemisphere Hold on. Here's New Zealand, way down here. It's warm. It's summer, right? It's not really the time of year you're going to be able to do a polar bear plunge. So they wait till June. What would be our first day of summer is their first day of winter. Oops. And so that's what they wait for is closer to their first day of winter to do their polar bear plunge. But they do. It's a big event there. Wow. Oh. There you go. So if you learn nothing else today, you've learned the weather is the opposite. I shouldn't say the weather. The climate is the opposite. The season is from the northern to the southern hemisphere. All right. That is it for homeschool trivia. Oh, oh, I forgot to tell everybody at the beginning of this. So everybody who has um, participated today by putting an answer in the chat thread is going to be entered in a drawing to win a custom mini unit study. So this, I'll reach out to you, um, or actually I'll post it in the thread here after we sign off, who won. And you can give me your email address and we'll, we'll chat about it. But basically you get to pick a topic and I will make you a mini unit study about your topic. So we did this last summer. And we had one family request one about nuclear weapons. That was what their child wanted. And one we did apple harvesting for, and one we did kookaburras for. So any topic really is game here for the unit study. So I'm going to, I will post it in the thread after we sign off here. And then for next week, my part of the trivia, I'm going to do a recap of all the holidays we've been talking about in December. So there'll be an emphasis on like different countries that celebrate. So a little world geography kind of emphasis. And Katie's topic is very interesting for next week. What is your topic next week, Katie? Milk. It is so <laughs> one of the free pages in my reading passages and writing prompt sample is National Milk Day, which I believe is the 11th, January 11th. Um, so we'll be doing it in advance, obviously, of, of actual National Milk Day, but that's the topic we'll be doing. So if you haven't grabbed that free resource, grab it now before next week so you can prepare for the milk. All right. That sounds good. I will put that in the chat thread as well after we sign off. All right. Everybody have a good New Year's. Maybe eat some grapes. Walk around with an empty suitcase. I don't know. Whatever grabs you. And we'll see have you Have some black eyed peas. <laughs> Have black eyed peas. Bye.